Oh, money. We're going to take him up and over. So pretty much the same stuff every day, especially now because I'm cutting weight for ADCC. So we got oatmeal today, and we're going to make some eggs. Usually I'll have toast with this, but we don't have toast today. So eggs and oatmeal. I'm also not a morning person at all. It's not even that early. I know some people will get up like, 5, 6 a.m. But I usually get up at 7 and I hate the morning, but I get plate of eggs in Make it feel good. This is not even my ghee. This is Brian Glick's ghee, and he's been training and then he asked me to do his laundry. Can you believe that? So that's what I'm doing right now. There's not many people in the world that would do laundry for it, including myself but Brian Glick is the exception. So this is all his stuff. Give me another kiss. It's pretty like uneventful morning, but uh, I try to get as much as I can done in as little time as possible so I can sleep as much as I can. Efficiency. That's the name of the game. For a while here, we had a little Jeep gang. It was me, Gary, and Gordon with the Jeeps. We off-roaded like, I don't know, six weeks ago, and Gary still hasn't washed his car. This is our Wednesday morning practice. Um, so morning sessions are usually around 90 minutes, and then afternoon classes usually go closer to two hours. So this is kind of our lighter practice, even though they're usually never uh, light sessions, but it's usually outside of camp, um, trying to work on new skills that I personally want to develop. But obviously, because it's uh, ADCC camp, I'm just kind of focused on the things that we'll need to work on for the tournament specifically, and just refining those things. Service level is so high; I didn't even expect to get my laundry done. Um, like a like a fool, I brought only one gi down, and so I had a training session with Marigali, a uh, training session with Giancarlo, and then another one this morning. And I was like, I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. And Giancarlo, out of the goodness of his heart, show you how good a guy that he is. Uh, did my did my laundry? I want to just show you something here, which is not only did he do my laundry, but he folded it and brought it back to me in this bag. So I mean, you know, what more could you ask for? We use our feet to bring his hand in, and then from here we just punch everything straight down to the floor. When we come in here, we see his legs falling back and away from us. We just put our outside leg up, we put our ear on our training partner's back, and as a result, we're in good position to score on the back. Okay? Let's give it a try, fellas. John was having us go over some wrestle ups from bottom. The techniques are like pretty much all focused on one topic and we kind of bounce from one technique to the other relatively quickly so we're kind of drilling a little bit quicker you know you're trying to get reps in at a you know faster rate we'll usually kind of divert uh, through different topics that are all kind of intertwined for adcc specifically let's get hydrated now ready for action we typically do the same rounds every single day you know we'll usually do like a, a mount round some sort of uh, turtle or background a leg lock round. Um, occasionally, you know, we throw in arm bar rounds and things like that. And we're doing a lot of what John calls creativity drills. So like the single leg drill that we've been doing, um, really specific for ADCC and for um, 
you know, situations where, you know, you can't get scored on, and so you have to, you know, get comfortable just being in that defensive position and then learning how to convert that into counter offense and things like that. It tends to be a little bit more repetitive as you get uh, closer and closer to competition because you're really just trying to tighten down those bolts and make sure everything's really sharp. You know, not necessarily trying to win every single exchange and go 100%, but um, definitely trying to make sure that there's uh, the margin for error is much, much smaller as you get closer and closer to the tournament. So that's that's basically the the premise, or at least the approach that I take for, uh, you know, these final weeks of preparation. We are at uh, Austin Archery Club. Uh, it's a super cool uh, place here. They have a big chunk of land here where they have uh, 3D archery uh, courses. Right now I'm just getting my, uh, my new setup dialed in and then we're gonna hit the course for a little bit and uh, get the training after. I've always wanted to get into it, but I never really had like a way to get in or I never prioritized it. And then one day, uh, Chris, who's uh, he's one of my students, and he just gave me a bow as a gift. So it was kind of like a gift from my students after teaching at the gym for a little over a year, and um, it's been a fun hobby to kind of add into my routine. This is a really nice shot. It's just something I felt like he would enjoy. So it's nice to be able to offer something back. It's kind of just a thank you. He seems like the type of person that's gonna to wanna to get out and hunt and get out there and, and train someone who's got that kind of mentality to be a good archer. Yeah, so what's hard about it is that it's a black target and it's in the shadows at an incline. And it's kind of a similar situation to the last one, Chris, right? Because it's just a downwards instead of upward. It's good to have something outside of your professional realm, like something that for an hour or so every couple days I can just go in and forget about everything, you know, shoot my bow. You're solely focused on that for, you know, however amount of time you're doing it. Doing, going from like jujitsu where I've been training forever and, you know, I, it's second nature to me to something brand new where you're essentially a white belt. It's frustrating and humbling in one way, but it's also extremely peaceful too. Like it just feels like you're only focused on that. You're just 100% zoned in. It's kind of like an active recovery is how I would put it. You know, it's like both for the body and for the mind. Oh, money. That was a freaking good one. Dude, let me see. You see it? I can't see the target. Literally right Oh yeah, there. yeah, that's great. Dude, awesome shot. That one felt great. Yeah. Big improvement from last week. I couldn't even see, like when you're see, when you're actually looking at it, you can't actually see any of this. Mm -hmm. I literally can only see this dark part. So I was, I was actually aiming for the black here. So was I. Yeah. With Jiu Jitsu, everyone has their own game, everyone has their own little bits and you can be taught those things, but you also have to kind of find your way. Archery is very similar in that where there's, there's the fundamentals and the more you practice, the more repetitive you can be, the better you get. Drilling is the same with jiu-jitsu. You know, it's more of a thinking man's game than just a physical game. And archery is very similar in that way. We just go through and we just shoot right into a head block cross face. She has the hand inside, we walk towards the hips, we take the hand to the inside, elbow to elbow. And now we just play here. When we're ready, we lift, and we lock the hands up nice and high. So we went over uh, pretty much some body lock, chest to chest stuff. 
pretty much the primary focus is everything that's going to be related to ADCC. So, you know, in camps, things get pretty repetitive, but I try to, you know, do my best to be as locked in and attentive as I can. Normally, you get into this routine where it's like you train, you eat, you go home, you sleep, you train, you eat, and so on and so forth. So I try to come into the training sessions with like a clean slate, fresh and ready to focus for the next, you know, two hours or however long the session is. Giancarlo is one of these guys that, you know, like, he's very, very much a student of the game. So little tricks, little traps that I set on other people, even heavier than him, actually a lot heavier than him will work. With him, it's not working. So we did that, that turtle round. I mean, we use it to force half guard chest to chest position. So with him, I, I see it more as a half guard round and he's always like elevating his game. So it's, it's, it's nice to see him, man. It's, you know, it's very uh, inspiring to be here right now. I teach five days a week, two days in the afternoon and three days in the evenings. So today's gonna be an evening class. Um, so I'll get showered here, get a quick uh, little bit of food uh, right after I shower and then we'll head up to the gym. I have a dietitian, and sometimes I'm not even hungry, like right now, but I have to eat now. And then I have to eat later because I need to be like fueled for tomorrow. Otherwise I won't have enough calories, so. I've had times where like I'll purposely like skip meals and wait till I'm really hungry and then I'll like put like two or three meals together and just have like one big one. But I feel like I train better when I'm eating like smaller meals throughout the day. And it just kind of gets boring. Like sometimes you just want a fucking sandwich or a pizza or something. But I don't mind it. Like it's not for that long. Take head position if possible, we take a foot to the hip. So when he tries to drive into us, it's hard for him to do. In addition, we control the wrist. Now when he tries to lock his hands, I have control of that wrist. We keep the hand weighted, take the foot off of the hip, we give a good strong pull and we get him into this position here. Now rather than taking him out to that corner, we just take him straight over. So I started teaching full time as a brown belt at uh, Bernardo Faria School in, in Boston. Teaching made it so that I had to first of all, develop the skill of teaching, which is, a, you know, it's a skill in of itself, being able to just articulate stuff in, in a way that people can comprehend, um, which is something that I really enjoy. But, you know, previously I used to just, my game used to be very intuitive. And once I started teaching, it's become a lot more uh, intentional. Like I really can understand my own game and then, you know, over time be able to articulate that and pass it along to other people. So I feel like it's benefited me as a competitor and in just understanding jiu-jitsu a lot more and being able to explain it and share that knowledge with people.
people here, you know, they like to train to whatever capacity, whether it be self-defense and firearms training, whether it be jiu-jitsu. So there's clearly like a, a pretty dedicated uh, group of people. Those are the type of people that like Tim Kennedy, who owns the school, he attracts that type of crowd, which is very good. We got a great group of people here. I really enjoy, you know, coming in, even after like a long day of training, coming in and teaching classes. The majority of my day and my training sessions, more so about myself, whereas here it's the opposite. If his hands are that way, I would just grab with your left hand, the other wrist. Good work. Nice job, man. So now I'm gonna go home, get some dinner, chill out, unwind for a little bit, and then tomorrow, same thing, once again.